All right, folks, so today we're going to go ahead and uh, install the deadener in a vehicle. Now, Second Skin Car Audio decided they wanted to send us this uh, Damplifier Pro. Now, Damplifier Pro is one of their best uh, sound deadening materials they make. Uh, they sent us the bulk pack, um, it's 36 square foot, which should be more than enough to go ahead and uh, take care of Donnie's trunk. We're just going to do a single layer. He doesn't need anything crazy done on his vehicle. And if there's any leftover, we're going to go ahead and put it on the doors. Um, might as well, since we've got some extra. Hopefully, we have some extra. Yeah. Let's go ahead and open this up and show you what we've got. All right, so in the package, when you open it up, this is what you get right here. 12 by 20 sheets. Yeah, 12 by 20. It's two millimeters thick. Um, it uses a rubber butyl. Let's go ahead and show you that backing real quick. Uses rubber, rubber butyl. It does not use any asphalt. This is not that junk you get online. This is the the stuff. It uses a. Uh, they also have a ghosted black on black uh, logo. Looks really beautiful when you install it in a vehicle. You know, you know it's legit. Yeah, this is some really good stuff. Actually, I've used this a couple times already, and I have to say the way it lays down. Um, first off, you're not getting it back off. It, this stuff stays even in cold weather or hot weather where. Like a lot of times, um, deadener, like the crappy stuff, it will start to peel itself if it gets too hot, or if it's cold, it doesn't stick too well. This stuff sticks no matter the temperature, it works perfectly. There's guaranteed adhesion on the box. Guaranteed adhesion. Uh, <laughs> now, um, again, they got this ghosted black on black look. It looks beautiful in my opinion. Um, they also went ahead and sent us this roller. Um, this is the standard roller you use. Basically, you're gonna put the panel, you're gonna put it on your panels, and you'll roll it in place. I use the roller to get it kind of where it needs to be. Then I'll use the butt end to get it in the cracks and crevices. I actually I like to use a screwdriver, the butt end, the butt end of a screwdriver, and I'll get it where it needs to be. Essentially, we're gonna put this in place, and then we're gonna go ahead and roll it in. You know, make sure it's nice, and we'll snug fit it with the butt, with the butt end of a screwdriver and it should fit real nice. Before we do that, let's go take a look at the trunk. Great news, folks. Second Skin has been gracious enough to give our viewers a discount on their next order. Go to secondskinaudio.com and use coupon code SUNDOWN10. That is SUNDOWN10 for 10% off your next order at secondskinaudio.com. So here's the trunk we have to work with right here. Um, it's actually a pretty large trunk with the openings not too big, but uh, we've got to pull this panel off here and all the um, all the carpeting and such that you see there. The weird thing about Donnie's trunk is where clips usually hold in place. I'll show you here in a minute, minute but where the clips hold um, these carpeted pieces, they're not there. It's like somebody removed them. So you can see. Yeah, right here we've got these you know we just use a panel popper and pop these off but on the inside there's usually a couple in here on the sides and up top they're all missing so that kind of makes the job a little easier for us honestly <laughs> so i'm going to go here and start pulling these panels off and then uh, once that is all pulled out we have to clean it you have to have a clean surface to put this stuff on so we'll go ahead, go ahead and get this rolling real quick Still got to clean up the edges. Uh, when we when we go ahead and we put the uh, deadener on, I'm pretty much going to kind of follow the edge of where the carpet was. That way you don't see any of it when we put the carpet back on. But, yeah, all this stuff in here, we don't want that to vibrate. So we'll go ahead and wrap all that up, fill in all these holes and such too. Now, if we really wanted to be um, 
stingent on this, we could go ahead and you know fill in these gaps with you know uh, a good spray foam or something like that. But to be honest with you, Donnie's not putting a crazy system. It's going to be a single 12 in here. We don't have to go wild with the deadener. You know, this isn't an SPL vehicle. It's not a huge SQ build. It's nothing crazy. It's just a daily build. You don't have to go wild. So we're just. I'm not gonna go ahead and fill all this in. We're just gonna cover all this with the dead nerve and stop the standard vibration, you know? Uh, we're gonna do the same thing with the inside. We don't have to do anything crazy on the inside. Just pull the carpet up, clean it up, lay the dead nerve down, make sure those panels aren't, you know, make sure we don't hear that, that, that vibration, and we should be good. So what I'm finding is uh, in this vehicle, instead of uh, instead of using the, the push clips, it just uses this little thing that screws on and tightens the, the carpet in place. Kind of weird, but I guess it works. So now we've got the carpet out. Um, as you can see, Donnie's battery is right back here where the system's gonna be. So it's gonna be make it, it's gonna make it really easy to do the install. We're gonna go ahead and remove um, the spare tire, the jack, uh, anything that's in here. Um, may have to remove the battery as well. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and get everything removed and clean it all up in here. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the battery. Uh, again, the battery is in the back of the trunk, and we want to deaden the trunk, so we need to get this out of here and the wires out of the way, so we can lay our our deadener right on right right in this area. So we'll go ahead and do that. Like I was explaining to Donnie, uh, I don't know, can you see through the video? Check, check that. Um, you can see can it. You see my hand? Yeah, you can see it. All right, so this, this main ground cable for the, just the factory grounding point for this battery is horrible. Um, it, 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 it attaches to this flabby piece of metal, which to me looks like it's just tack welded in place. Hell, they're using seam sealer in some spots. I can see that. It's it's a shitty ground for a factory location. It's horrible. So we may try to find a better grounding point, not only for the system, but for your battery in general. So uh, if I could find a better spot, maybe underneath the underneath the floor, down 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 in here or whatever, uh, we'll do that. And we've got more than enough wire to, to make that happen. So we can extend this and everything will be fine, but for now that is horrible. I, I don't even like putting a system on something that's that flabby, so we'll just make it work. All 
right, also, people, uh, can you see this right here? Yes. So, since this is a flooded battery, it's not an AGM, it's not a sealed battery, it is a standard flooded battery, uh, the factory has this tube right here that any gases that get released go through this tube and out the vehicle, so that way the, the gases are not in the vehicle themselves. Now, if he gets a sealed battery like an AGM or gel cell or whatever, uh, he won't have to worry about that because they're sealed already. But we have to undo that, get it out of the way, and now we can pull the battery up. So here's the roller that we're going to use, and the button and the screwdriver, which I really enjoy using. Wow, you can hear how that sounds like shit in here. We're going to change that real quick. Now before we start laying uh, all this deadener in here, we wanted to, first off we had to pull all the wires out around here, you know, here's, a, here's a group of them, and these are all clipped into place, and we want to put these back in the factory locations, so you just have to be mindful of the holes where those clips go. So here is one of them, well this is a stud, same thing here. And then in here, there's some holes we have to reuse too. So we just have to be mindful of those. <coughs> you use your screwdriver to puncture those holes back up. So the first sheet we're gonna lay is gonna be right where the battery goes. Uh, that way we can put the battery back in its place. And at some point or another, we'll probably end up changing this ground out because this is just a really bad ground from the factory. So go ahead and, actually, let's see here. We're just going to test fit this in place, see how it fits. So this first piece is going to be like that, and I just wanted to make sure it fits good. Um, yeah, we've got a hole here that we have to reuse, and you know what I might do? I might bring it up to right there. So when you have a lot of metal to metal contact, you don't always have to put your deadener right there. Um, because it's already thick enough, it's not going to vibrate much. But uh, like right here on the on this corner, right here, where the battery goes. I uh, don't really have to bring a piece right there. So I've got about an inch because there's a a part here that the battery connects to. We don't. I don't want to get in the way of that. So I'm just going to put it right here on this seam, and then we have to puncture out this hole right here, and this little piece, if, if this is in the way, we'll have to push that through as well. So I'm going to take this backing off, well, some of it. You don't always have to take all of it off right at the first try. I'm going to take off some of it. It's real sticky, so wherever you put it is where it's going to go. Right there. I'm just going to push out my hand, kind of get it in place. Oh, you know, we need a knife. We definitely need a knife. And then... I'm just pulling this out slowly. Doesn't have to look beautiful, guys. So make sure it gets in all the seams real good. right here just around that piece that's stuck up and we have to lay that down there should have done that before I did anything else <laughs> off so we have that hole that needs to be used I'm just gonna since that's just a small sliver of metal just a knife cut that off just like that if I wanted to I could just stick this down in here <laughs> just to use it so we're not wasting 
all right so there's that i don't have to put any more holes in it uh, we didn't touch this piece at all so we're good there let's see all right so i'm gonna give donnie the roller and he's just gonna press fit it all in all in place and then uh, i'm gonna come back with the button of a screwdriver and make sure it's in all the curves and crevices Now I'm gonna get in here with the screwdriver and push down in all the all the little cracks and crevices that the roller doesn't get. This helps you with all the little shapes. See there's like a shape right here. So I get in there and shape it out. There we go. flat part of the screwdriver get in real tight areas too. We'll make sure we have good contact. There's no air bubbles in any of this. It's also good to use gloves when you do this because this metal will cut you. It is aluminum. <laughs> but we're gonna live dangerous today folks. Alright so this next piece this next, next piece we're going to put up through here. Again, we're just trying to get the area of the battery sits so we can put the battery back in its place. So the next piece, there's a lot of shit in the way right here. Um, we have to watch out for this. So I'm going to lay about half of it, cut it where it needs to get cut, and then I should be able to lay the other half. It should sit like this. And we'll bring it right up to the top here too. If it goes the way I plan it to go, it shouldn't be too hard, but actually, you know what? I have those big scissors. <laughs> like this, just like that. I'm going to use this knife. I'm going to actually, I got it set in place. I'm actually going to use this knife to cut where I want the cut to be. Like that. Ah, we should be good there, too, right here. So I can, before I even take the backing off, I'm laying this out and I'm feeling where I need to cut it. So I'm gonna cut right there too. That just helps me, it helps me lay the place where it needs to go before I even take the backing off. Again folks, it doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to do the job. I will say this stuff looks better than most of the stuff on the market, but if you want to put it on and put it on the proper way, it's not always going to look nice when it's, that, when it's done. That doesn't matter as long as it's doing what it's supposed to do. There we go. You see that? Cut that right in place there. Just going to get in there with your hands. Push it in where it needs to go before you start rolling it out. Right here is a big divot. There we go. I'm gonna put a relief cut right here since there's a big angle. Like that. There we go. If you've got a bunch of curves, sometimes you gotta cut it in place. To, uh, because this stuff doesn't bend very good, you know, it's just going to crumple up, so you have to put relief cuts. I have to put a relief cut right here. This, we're going to cover that right up. We don't need this hole. Okay. See how that's overlapping? That's yeah. good. Let's just see the holes right there. I'm actually going to poke this. 
And I can see where that hole goes. That's for the clips for this plastic piece. Okay. All right, I'm done. He's gonna come over here and roll this in, and I want to use a button new screwdriver. So before we take the backing off of this piece right here, we've got this little stud coming out. That stud's for the wires that run across here, and we need that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this where I want it. I'm going to press that stud right through, just like that. That way when I take the backing off, I'm actually going to set that part first so it's right where it needs to go. And I'll go ahead and push this all in. I'm also going to have to do some relief cuts up here. That way this folds down nice and easy. Um, might be able to get away with just one, maybe one or two cuts, maybe on an angle like this and fold it over. There'll be another piece that sits right here as well. So now that we have that through, I'm gonna go ahead and lay this. Just like that. Pull this back around, little by little. So I want to start folding this and see where it wants to bend. So right here is the seam. I want to go ahead and I'm going to cut right here, like that, fold that down. Same thing here. One more relief cut, just like that, and just like that. Push all this in place. Be very careful with your fingers. This metal is sharp. I should be wearing gloves. <sighs> Actually, put another cut right here. Push this down where it needs to go. See how nice it is when you put get that. Yeah, see, so much better using this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh. Good stuff right there. Yeah, I love using the back end of a screwdriver. So, here I got this tube in the way. Um, so I need to cut out for this. We got to be, make sure we don't cut the tube itself though. <laughs> so I'm just kind of laying this in place. I'm going to kind of score where I want my cut to be. Bring it over here and I'll, I'll cut it. Make sure that that works where it is. And that will work where it is. Cool. All right, so again, like I did here, I'm going to just pull back some of this, put it in place. That way I'm not dealing with a whole piece that wants to stick at the same time. So just little bits. This stuff, you know, as, soon as, it, as soon as it touches something, it wants to stick to it. So you got to be really careful. Looking good, Donnie. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. You gotta grunt a little bit when you do work, you know? 
Alright, so I wanted to show you guys this. This right here is a vent. When the trunk closes, the air pressure goes out this vent. It is imperative that you do not cover this up with the deadener. Or else you can blow your windows out when you, when you, uh, you know, do your trunk. So, do not cover your vent holes. Some vehicles have one, this one's got two, or this one has, um, some vehicles have two, this one has one. So there's one big one here. He does not have one on the other side. So um, it's just on this side. So we want to make sure we don't cover that up. And we'll, we'll probably just put one sheet right there anyway. So I most likely won't be going up here. We may or may not. It depends on how much we have left. But for now, we're just going to keep rolling on this. And we'll cut back to this uh, when we get it all set. We're going to go ahead and put the battery back in place because we're not sure if we're going to be able to finish all this in one day. We're kind of busy.
See that what I just did there? There's no light in here, damn it. Yeah, you, there's the, the grooves, you kind of go with the grooves. You yeah, the shape. so I take, I just take this, I just, yeah, I gotta, you gotta dad while you do it, you know. There we go. There's more curvature in here. I'm just following all the curves of the vehicle, you know. There you go. There you go. How'd you like that? Second skin for the win. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. Getting there. Actually, about to run out of shit. We have to get some more. All right. Well, what's okay. your question? So I see we have like spots, like right there, smaller spots. Uh huh. What if I got like a different kind of deadener later, like one sheet, a cheaper deadener? Mm -hmm. Can I fill it in? Yeah. If that's, so, is it so, going to make a difference uh, if I use two different brands of deadener? It, it does not matter at all. Styles? It doesn't matter. In all honesty, okay. you know, a lot of people do that. And I, even me personally, I've done it multiple times. Okay. So a lot of people, what they do, see how we just, this is all one layer, right? Yeah. A lot of people put more layer, more than one layer, multiple, <laughs> multiple oh layers. So, yeah, and it takes forever. So, you know, little spots like these over here and up here, and then we've got like little edges down in here. Yeah. So you can, you know, if you run out of this stuff, you may have some other stuff laying around. You could definitely fill it in. In all honesty, in our in our situation, in your vehicle, Donnie. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, these little spots that are left over, yeah. we really don't need to put any more in there. It, it's, it would be beneficial if we did, but it's not needed, especially in these corners. It's you know, you've, there's more cosmetic than anything. It, yeah, it's more cosmetic. So, okay. so these parts right here, they're, they're pretty damn strong already because they're, they've already got a curve in them. Okay. Anywhere where there's a curve or a contour, it's stronger. <laughs> and the other thing is, all the parts that are flat, like there's a flat piece here, flat piece there, this is all flat. Those are the parts that vibrate. Those are the parts that we need to deaden. So all the curves and contours, not so big a deal. But again, okay. if you want things to look really pretty, then it's nice to put this in. In your case, we're not going to do that because we, we're starting to run out of, <laughs> even though we got a butt ton of, yeah, uh, two, two yeah we got a bunch of, and we haven't even done this yet. So we're going to actually have to buy some more and, and put it up there. So, but we're getting there, and we also, I'm um, also going to end up doing the um, the rear deck. Uh, still, I still want to try to figure out what we want to do with the speakers and how we're gonna how we're gonna mount things. But uh, eventually, yes, we're gonna put some deadener up there too because that also vibrates. Okay, so we need to go ahead and we need to tackle the uh, the trunk lid. Um, it's probably the most intricate part of deadening when it comes to doing the whole trunk itself. The trunk itself is is fairly easy, but the, the trunk lid can be a bit of a pain. There's a few ways we can tackle this. Um, we're gonna do it probably the simplest way. First thing we did was we removed these little pockets and we removed the, uh, the carpeting that was on here. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna remove this uh, uh, third brake light. Uh, that way it gives us access to that area. We're gonna cover these up, these holes. We're gonna cover these holes and these holes. Essentially, we're just gonna cover all the holes so Donnie, do you think that anybody's gonna be locked in your trunk to have to need to pull this? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, uh, I think it'll be fine. So yeah. we're just gonna block these. I was actually worried about that because I thought we were gonna have to do all kinds of intricate like cutting to free no. up these holes in this space. So the way the way um, that we do it, there's a few way again, there's a few ways to tackle this, but in all honesty, I mean some people They'll, they'll go and they'll fill in these holes with... Uh, Look at the little guy running. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little uh, arrow. Let's show him that. Let's show him. It's a little arrow pointing out of the truck and a little guy running. Run or for gal. your life. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to take this out. Oh, well, that's what I was saying. There's a lot of people fill in the... the uh, the, the gaps with um, foam, like spray foam. You know, we don't need it. We're not going to do that. Okay. Um, you can do it. We're not going to do it. Is there any benefit to doing it that way? Yeah, the benefit is you just get less rattle. Okay. Um, I just I just don't think it's necessary for what we're. You have a, a single twelve. Single twelve. Yeah. yeah. It's not necessary. So 
when we pull, we, the, we have to be mindful of things like where these screw, you know, these bolts are yeah. and where things go back. Yeah. So, and we're going to cover this. I don't think we need it. Um, like the only air that's going to be escaping is going to be through this area right here. And we might just put enough deadener in there to kind of stop this from rattling, but we're going to cover all this. Uh, we got to pop all the wires out, out of the way. When we do, when we do this hole right here, be mindful. There's a wire that's running. It's running right here. Yeah. So we're gonna make a little pocket for that wire to run through, and that's it. For the most part, we're gonna cover that up. Um, and we have to also have to be mindful. I know I keep using the word mindful, but that's just the word I'm using today. You know, yeah. we've, we've got the carpeting. When we when we make when we put these sheets down. We're gonna come outside of where the carpeting is, and then we're gonna put the carpet back and trace where that carpet goes, and then cut, and then the cut that out. That way, you don't see any of the dead there. So your carpet's gonna hide everything. So, Thanks for letting me know. I can, I can be mindful of that. Yes, yeah, so you have to be yeah. mindful, Daddy. Yeah. You know, be, be mindful of everybody's feelings at the same time while you're doing it. It's a known issue. Yeah, so it's a known issue. <laughs> so, we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I was a little wrong here. Um, the for some reason I was thinking the carpeting came all the way out here, but it, it doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where these holes are, and then we're going to cut. For the record, that line was the gasket. Yeah, the line that we saw Just pointed it out was the right. gasketing where where the trunk meets the gasket. I was thinking the carpet went up to that point, but uh, whatever. So anyway, we're going to mark where the where the carpet goes, we're going to mark out where the holes are for the, the clips to go in there and hold it in place. Then we're going to have to draw a nice line of how we want to cut the deadeners. That way it doesn't look stupid. We at least want it to look pretty. We're going to put some more up here to pretty it up and make it look good. And um, that way we do a nice pretty install. Folks, all healed up.
we want to give a big shout out to these guys here. This is Second Skin for allowing us to use their Damplifier Pro. This stuff worked really well. Donnie, this, how do you feel about putting dead in the car? I feel pretty good about it now. I cut myself the first time that I did it, and yeah. that really sucked. But um, you know, I'm, I'm taking your uh, your advice and kind of just slowly peeling it off a little bit, and then just working with it, kind of yeah. feeling where it goes. Um, and I feel a lot more confident now than I did before. And this stuff was awesome. Uh, second skin for the win. Yeah, they, these guys make a, a superior product to most of the stuff you see on the market. Um, the, the price is right on point. It's not way way expensive, but it is, it is good stuff. It's not the cheapest stuff out there, but you get what you pay for. These guys do really, they make really good stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look. The trunk is finished. We're, we're done with the deadening part of it. Um, we still have some sheets left. We're probably gonna put those in the doors and we'll probably do some on the rear deck when we put the six by nines in. Um, we may or may not show that part. But um, for the most part, the trunk is deadened, and that's the most important part. Let's go see what we have, what we did here. All right, so the floor is done. We just did a single sheet of all of the Damplifier Pro. We got some on the sidewalls. You know, where you have all these these curves and contours, you know, that's pretty thick metal. It doesn't vibrate much, so we, it's not really so much needed right there. Same thing on this side. Same thing, we just covered all the flat spots, the parts that actually vibrate. We did the battery tray area, took the battery out. We're actually gonna go ahead and replace that. We'll do another video about that. And we're gonna replace the ground that we talked about because that was pretty rough. So, and next uh, we will probably do the rear deck. I'll probably do the rear deck on the top part of it where the speakers go, um, not so much on the inside. It's actually harder to get from the inside, from underneath the trunk. But that is the deadener, and obviously you just saw us do this part, and that's done and put the carpet. So the next part we're gonna do here is the carpeting. So we, get, we have to lay the wood in and the carpet, see where it sits, see where we wanna cut that line at. We're gonna have to lay the speaker box on top of it to see where we want it to flap up, and that way we can cut our line. And don't forget folks, your next order at secondskinaudio.com. Use promo code SUNDOWN10 at checkout. That's 10% off your next order at secondskinaudio.com.